ceasefire now just basically means we would like to welcome another attack of October 7th. This is the only thing it means. Hamas welcomed this decision of the UN. But food, fuel, water are scarce and disease is rampant. That's why they're calling for the humanitarian ceasefire. Well, obviously there is humanitarian aid that gets into the Gaza Strip, but unfortunately Hamas is taking over this humanitarian aid. So even for the sake of the Palestinians, it's better for Israel to finish the job. But do you accept that you are losing international support by the day? Not for what you're trying to do, but the way that you're doing it. Absolutely not. I think, first of all, American support is, is incredible. You can see just now, I mean, it was American decision to veto a UN resolution for ceasefire. Mm. And you can see the UK support. I, I've been ambassador to the UK. I've never seen more leaders from the UK coming to Israel. I just went with David Cameron to but see in Kibbutz Berry the, the, the leftovers of Hamas massacre. Yeah, so you can see... But your most that powerful ally... That the world the, is supporting well, Israel. Well, your most powerful ally, the President of the United States, said also a few hours ago, talking about support for Israel, you are starting to lose that support by indiscriminate bombing. He is accusing Israel of indiscriminate bombing. So Biden supports Israel's aim of this war to bring back the hostages. And I carry this doc talk to remind everyone we still have 137 innocent people in the Gaza Strip. The United States, including the president, agrees that the Gaza Strip cannot carry on with Hamas control. So there is only one way to achieve that which is to uproot the terror infrastructure that Hamas built. Unfortunately, some of it is, is embedded in population. So Israel is doing everything right. to prevent but, casualties but from he among says, civilians. He's, American presidents choose their words very carefully on this issue. Indiscriminate means random, without care. He is saying you are bombing Gaza without care. Absolutely not. And, and you know what? You know, let, let's just see history. Americans were fighting ISIS in Mosul. You had much more people that got killed in Mosul proportionally than the people in Gaza. And another thing, when you're thinking about the amount of efforts Israel is doing, we're talking about designated places to the Palestinians to hide. We're talking yeah. about humanitarian aid. But, do you remember, by the way, do you just, remember a just case? Just on this point, just Mark, on this point. Mark, no, just I'm on the point. you a question. Of, 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 do you remember a case that any country in the world created humanitarian corridor to the enemy? I don't remember you helping right. Nazi Germany during the war, right. and I don't remember Americans helping Japanese during the Second World War. The, pro so the point I'm trying to make. Just to put it in proportions. Right. The point I'm trying to make is that the impression, even in the United States and in the White House, is that in your pursuit of Hamas, you're hitting targets even though you know civilians will be killed. Absolutely that's, not. Again, but that's what indiscriminate means, I and can, that's what Joe Biden I can Biden tell you what saying. we do. Uh, I respect Joe Biden, the President of the United States. I respect the American support. But if there, there is one thing I protect is IDF's actions at the moment. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because on October 7th, Israel was traumatized by the worst massacre Israel experienced since the Holocaust. Yeah, they get why you're doing it. The questions I'm asking you about, about is how, how you're doing it. So I, now I, the Prime Minister, Netanyahu, yes. says the end of Hamas is near. How near? So I'm not sitting now in the war room, so I cannot tell you how much time we have left to the war. But I know that as long as our hostages are still there, and I know that as long as Hamas is still firing rockets in our cities, and we're talking about over 11,000 rockets on Israeli cities in the last few weeks. Well, this is the point. This is the point. We, we, the we truth need to is, stop that. It's believed that three of Hamas's five brigades are still intact. The head of Hamas, Yahya Sinwar, is still in Gaza at large. So the destruction of Hamas does seem some way off. How long will it take? Is it going to take weeks? Is it going to take months? You need, How long first, will it take? first of all, I really believe this is a matter of more than a few weeks. So we need, we need time for this. And as you said, there is still a lot of work to do. Here's my point. If it costs... 18,000 lives to kill what you say is 7,000 Hamas terrorists so far. How many civilians will have to die to kill all 25 to 30,000 Hamas fighters in Gaza? Um, I have a good answer. If Hamas wants to surrender now and to bring back our hostages, no civilian in Gaza will get killed. Right, but if they don't surrender, uh, 
um, the reality confronting Israel is that you're going to have to carry on, you're going to have to, as you say, wipe out Hamas. Um, do you accept that that could mean tens of thousands more civilians dying in the process? It's not like we, we want civilians to get killed. We were caught into this war, not because Israel woke up in the morning and started to attacking the people of Gaza. Israel woke up into October 7th, and they were brutally murdered by people that worked in their houses. Mm. So Israel woke up in, in the morning, and we realized yeah. that on the other side, there are people that want to commit a genocide to the Jewish people. I think the Jewish people have learned something from the Holocaust. The Americans say there's a gap between what you're promising in protecting civilians and what is happening on the ground. More than twice as many children have died in Gaza since October the 7th than in all the conflicts worldwide last year. Um, how, how can that be justified? I cannot justify any death or any loss of life. This is not the idea. The idea is to justify our duty to our children. Isn't the danger that, as Lloyd Austin, US Defense Secretary, says, you're in danger of turning a tactical victory, tactical victory into a strategic defeat? In other words, so many youths are going to be radicalized that they continue to fight against Israel? Actually, the opposite, and I'm so uh, pleased that you're, you're asking this, because 2005 was the day that Israel left the Gaza Strip in order to give the Palestinians an opportunity to build a safe heaven next to the sea. Gaza could have been a beautiful place, having industrial areas, having hotels, and beautiful, beautiful places. What Hamas turned this place in a few months was to a place that uses his people as human shields, takes all the money from Iran, Qatar, and the humanitarian aid it receives to build underground terror city that cost them over $300 million that could have made a great city, but instead of that, he preferred to build a terror city. So, okay, you eradicate Hamas. There's a question about whether you can do that, eradicate an ideology. We have no but question, you get by rid the of, way. We know we can do it. All right. Well, you get rid of Hamas. What happens post-Hamas in Gaza? What happens to two million people in Gaza? What do you think should happen? So I think the Israeli government's uh, vision at the moment is in order to have a better future both to the Palestinians and to the Israelis, Gaza must be demilitarized and Gaza must be de-radicalized. So this is the two things, the two pillars. I always love to compare it to the Marshall Plan. But, but with the under, Marshall under Plan, Israeli occupation? Obviously, we're not interested to govern the Palestinians, but we are interested to make sure that Gaza won't become another terror hub. But so how? we how will demilitarize Gaza. Right. We will dem demilitarize Gaza because who? no one else volunteers to do that, by the way. And then who is in and, Gaza? And we believe that together with our allies and with the moderate Arab countries, we can build a better future. But let me tell you my own insight. If education won't be addressed in Gaza, we will end up having another terror organization with a different name. What do Don't you mean education? It means when you had a Marshall Plan after the Second World War, there were yeah. two countries that were totally radical, uh, the German society after the Nazi regime and Japan in, during the war. Those two societies turn out to be a good Western countries that everyone loves to. But, to but I don't quite know what you mean. Education in Gaza. Who are you going to educate? I want think to? I think part at the moment under the UN name, the UNRWA schools yeah. are becoming terror schools. So you're talking about We're the under the UN. population. If you have the UN involvement, then forget about refugee camps. Why should they be refugees after 70 years of, of you know, having independent life? They could have but, built their own life, but, but they didn't. But re-education is a kind of, you know, you think of China, and you think of... Absolutely not. This is what you did. This is what you did in Nazi in, Germany. This in is what the Muslim British Uyghurs people. and so forth. You're, I mean, you're, 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 you're not learning from your own history. You know, in this residence that you came to, there is a Churchill painting. There is one thing we learned from Churchill's experience fighting Chamberlain's policy yeah. is the fact he cannot appease pure evil. So he knew you cannot negotiate with Hitler. We know we cannot negotiate with Hamas. It means we need to have a better future for the Palestinians. And in order to achieve that, you need to do what, what you Two-state solution? Is there did. still a chance for a two-state solution? I think it's about time for the world to realize the Oslo paradigm failed on the 7th but of October, and we need to build a new one. And in order to build a new one... But does that new one include the Palestinians living in a state of their own. Does, think, is that what it includes? I think the biggest question is, what type of Palestinians are on the other side? This is what Israel no, realized. Do they have a state, 
The answer is absolutely no, and I'll tell you why. Well, then because how can at there the be moment, peace? No, how can I'll there be peace answer you. The reason there is no peace Israel. is because the Palestinians... How can, with, without offering Mark. a state to Palestine, how Mark. can there be peace in Israel? Israel knows today, and the world should know now, the reason the Oslo Accords failed is because the Palestinians never wanted to have a state next to Israel. They want to have a state from the river to the sea. So the two-state solution is dead. Why are you obsessed with a formula that never worked, that created this radical people in the other side? Why are you obsessed with that? Think about it. Is that normal to carry on with a solution that never worked in the past? Okay. The Palestinians kept on denying, and now it will create another terror state. Israel is not interested Final in that. Final question. Benjamin Netanyahu, has this been a total failure of policy, a failure of security policy, a failure of policy on Hamas, uh, and a failure of policy with the Palestinians? So I can tell you honestly that all Israelis feel like we failed understanding the real intentions of Hamas. This declarations about genocide to the Jewish people, Hamas meant what he said, and unfortunately... But you bolstered Hamas and, and at the expense second, I, of the Palestinians. Was that a mistake? It wasn't Israel that chose Hamas to lead the Gaza Strip. It was Palestinians voting in elections in 2005 after Israel withdrew. In 2006, Hamas took power brutally on the Gaza Strip. So with all but, the respect, you cannot blame Israel but just for the finally, fact with all Palestinians those failures, chose Hamas. With all those failures, does your prime minister survive this? Does Netanyahu survive this it's, after the war? I'll, does he survive I'll give you this? the answer. Israel is a democratic country. We will have election. I think no matter who we lead Israel, and this is bigger than Netanyahu or any other politicians, we need to understand our security paradigm will must change. Okay. And I think this is what Israelis are realizing at the moment. Okay. Israel will have election. The Israeli people will say who they want them to be their leader. But I know all Israelis agree that we cannot live next to a terror organization and people that kill innocent children. Ambassador, thank you very much. Thank you.